The Detroit Pistons came this close, just this close to having back-to-back curses broken, but just weren't able to pull it off against the Washington Wizards. We'll talk about what happened and why they ended up not being able to close this out late in today's episode of the Lockdown Pistons Podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. You can find us anywhere. Also, make sure you head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Obviously, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's the best way to support the podcast. We're on our road to 2,000 subscribers. We're also trying to show Locked On that we are the fastest and best growing network at the Locked On Network. So again, make sure you guys go ahead to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. And also, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter at Kuka Hill, per usual. I'm your host every single day, obviously. Um, a few nights ago, the Pistons went against the Washington Wizards. And this was a game coming off them, breaking their curse against the Charlotte Hornets. And it looked like the Pistons were coming close to being able to break two curses in back-to-back games. They had lost 14 straight games or 13 straight games against the Washington Wizards at their house. And they came close to snapping that, but they just weren't able to as they dropped their 14th straight loss to Washington at their place uh, by a score of 116 to 113. Now, this was a fun game to watch. I I really enjoyed this game. It was a fun game to watch. I'm sure you guys enjoyed it. Uh, But before we talk about like some individual play and, and, you know, talk about some of the, some of the great things that we saw in this game, what made it so fun. Just what happened with the Pistons? How did they lose control of this game? How did this game get out of control? Uh, how did they end up losing this game? Uh, I Also, I want to make sure before we get into this that it wasn't like some game the Pistons had some big lead and blew it or something. This was a back and forth game throughout the entire time. There was nine lead changes, 11 times the game was tied. It was back and forth, really good shot making on both sides, clutch play on both sides, uh, highlight plays on both sides at critical moments. It was just a really good game. If you guys didn't watch that game, you guys missed one, I would suggest you guys go back and rewatch it because it really was just a, a fun game to watch. The Pistons even put up 40 points in a quarter. They put 40 points up in the second quarter. Um, but, yeah, the Pistons were able to close it out. So what happened? Why weren't they able to close this game out? And there's a particular stretch that you can point to that really, I think, just completely lost them the game. And, you know, I don't want to – usually, you know, you can't just put it all on, on two players or one player why they lost. Uh, but I really do think that this stretch, you could really literally point to two players as really hurting the Pistons and, you know, directly impacting this loss. Uh, so we're going to go all the way to the third quarter, at the end of the third quarter. With 2.23 left in the quarter, Jeremy Grant hits a three-point jump shot, and the Pistons go up by six points, 85-79. They don't score again until like the seven-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Let's go over the possessions that happened after this moment. Immediately after Jeremy Grant's three, you have a Kelly Olenek turnover at a minute 40. You have a Hamdu Diallo missed three-pointer at 110. You have another catch-and-shoot Diallo jump shot. It's a long two at 40 seconds that missed. And then you had a Killian Hayes end of the end of, uh, end of the quarter, step back three, uh, whatever. That doesn't really matter too much. It was at the end of the quarter, whatever. Wasn't really in the flow of the offense. Um, so you have, again, a Olenek turnover. A Diallo missed three, a Diallo missed long two, and then Killian Hayes' step back three at the end of the quarter. Start the fourth quarter. Immediately, 11 seconds in, a Frank Jackson turnover. Next possession, another Diallo missed three-pointer. Next possession, a bad shot by Frank Jackson. The next uh, next possession, a Frank Jackson turnover. A next possession, uh, Isaiah Livers missed three-pointer. Next possession, Killian Hayes gets called for carrying. So they don't score again until Killian Hayes is a driving layup at 8.50 left in the fourth quarter. And in this time, what happened was the Washington Wizards completely stopped guarding Hamdou Diallo from beyond the arc. That's At least this is one of the things that happened. We'll talk about another thing that happened. But that was the main thing that happened. They stopped guarding Hamdou Diallo and basically tempted him or dared the Pistons to live with Hamdou Diallo taking jumpers. And for about three minutes of this stretch, the Pistons took that dare. They, they said, okay, you know what, we'll take it and we'll see what happens. And it completely backfired. Diallo missed a three, missed a jump shot, missed another three, missed another jump shot. The Pistons died with him and Diallo taking jumpers. And I understand if a team's not going to play him, he's wide open. 
but you're not going to win games if you're trying to live with the yellow hitting threes or hitting jump shots. It can't be a focal point of your offense, especially when you have a, all five bench lineup out there, especially as well for like a five minute stretch from like the 225 mark until like the 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter. They were living off of Hamadou Diallo taking jumpers, and it just wasn't going to work. And in this stretch, the Pistons did not score again, like I said, until the 850 mark on a Killian Hayes driving layup, and they were already down by 10 points. I believe Washington went like on a 15 0 run at this point. It was tough. So the Pistons ba- were baited into a, uh, playing Diallo and giving Diallo open shots and it and went against them. And another one was another thing that really hurt them in this stretch was Frank Jackson obviously is not 100%. He's working his way in. It's not like we're not trying to ridicule these guys. We're just talking about what happened. And Frank Jackson was trying to work his way back in. You could clearly see he had some rust. He turned the ball over a few times. One of his turnovers was just horrifically bad. It was off the off the uh, inbounds on the sideline. Really bad pass that led to uh, a Sadoransky steal uh, that ended up with a If Smith pull up jumper. So it was just it, it wasn't it wasn't good by Frank. Frank had two turnovers in a matter of two and a half minutes or one and a half minutes, along with a bad jump shot. So Diallo and Frank Jackson really hurt the Pistons during the stretch. Uh, again, Frank Jackson was knocking some rust off, trying to get back in the game shape. It's not that big of a deal. The Pistons lost. They played a good game. It was expected that he was going to have to knock off some rust. But this stretch by Frank Jackson, Hammond, and Diallo really dug the Pistons in. They were up 85-78. And next thing you know, they're down, was it, 85-97 in a matter of four minutes. That's just, it, it was tough. It was really rough. I know some people were trying to criticize Dwayne Casey for leaving the bench lineup out there too long. He, I mean, he didn't even really leave the bench lineup out there too long. Like, he started getting starters back in at 950. He got Isaiah Stewart back in at 950. He got Diallo, he got, took out Diallo for Sadiq Bey and Jeremy Grant out, or Jeremy Grant back in for Isaiah Livers at the eight minute mark. Like, he got them back in pretty damn early. He, like, they got less of a break than they usually get. And also, the bench lineup has been really good for them all season. And most, a lot of times this season, they save the Pistons in this kind of situation and these stretches. They save the Pistons a lot of times. So it makes sense why he would trust the bench, but just living with Hamadou Diallo, falling for the bait, taking the bait and letting him take so many jumpers really hurt the Pistons. And also just trying to incorporate Frank Jackson back into the offense uh, and him knocking off some rest and having some really bad turnovers uh, also dug the Pistons in. So I'm not going to blame those two guys, but definitely that stretch, I think you can really, that stretch specifically, I think really comes down to those two guys again. Game baited and allowing him to do the alley, take three after three after three and jumper after jumper. And Frank Jackson just turning the ball over and taking bad shots. Those two things really hurt the Pistons over that stretch. And they ended up going by, down by 12 points. They ended up coming back, making it a game again, keeping it close. It looked like they maybe were going to have a chance to force overtime, uh, but wasn't able to do it. Despite that stretch, though, like I said, it was a really fun game. I enjoyed watching it. We'll talk about some of the fun things that we saw in the game. But I just want to talk about that stretch because so many people have been talking about it, trying to criticize Dwayne Casey, just what happened. Why did the Pistons fall apart at that stretch? I just want to talk about it real quick. Um, but when we come back, we'll talk about more of the fun stuff that happened in this game. You had some really nice play, again, from Sadiq Bey. You had some nice play from Jeremy Grant. Kay Cunningham had some nice contributions off the bench from Kelly Olenek and Killian Hayes. We'll talk about all that stuff when we come back from the ad break. But first, I have to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, BetOnline.net. The football season might be over this year with my guy, Matthew Stafford, my quarterback, winning the damn Super Bowl one year away from the Detroit Lions. Who would have guessed? But basketball is in full steam for both pro and college shoots. From all the latest odds, totals, and player performance props to where the next fire coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to the Olympic coverage and information. And they'll have baseball on there whenever they figure out what's going on over there. I don't keep up with baseball, but... Whatever's going on over there is pretty crazy. They might not even have a season. We have to stay tuned with that. But if you're a baseball guy, and whenever that season starts up, Online Net will have you covered there as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action today. Again, head to the website today at BetOnline.net or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action today. Online, where the game starts. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you have not already, head to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button at Lockdown Pistons. We're on our road to 2,000 subscribers. We're trying to continue to show Lockdown Network that we are the best and fastest growing 
fan base at the Lockdown Network. So again, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Piss and hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Best way to support the podcast. Um, but yeah, this game against the Washington Wizards was a lot of fun. Just a lot of fun. You had some really good games from multiple Pistons here. And it was just an overall team effort. There's some guys who obviously struggled a little bit. Hamadou Diallo didn't have a very good stretch. Um, Isaiah Livers didn't look as good this game. Uh, Frank Jackson obviously didn't look that good. Ronnie Magruder struggled. But overall, I, you got some pretty good contributions from around the team. Sadiq Bey ended up with 19 points. Jeremy Grant, 26 points. K dropped 29 and 5. Uh, you had some good play from Kelly Olenek, Killian Hayes. It was an overall fun game. Uh, and one thing I really want to talk about again, it's just something that I'm going to continue to point out because it really is just so, it's kind of like mind boggling to me because I, I have never seen this happen before. And I've told you guys before, if you guys can think of something like this happening before, you have to let me know. But I, I really don't remember this ever really happening within an NBA season. And Sadiq Bey's continued excellent play. Again, I've used this example many times on the podcast. That's because he's a Piston player in recent memory that I remember this happening with. KCP, his rookie season, really struggled. He started to get better, better, better as the season came on. And then the final game of the season, he capped it off with an explosion against the Thunder. They had everybody like, okay, this guy struggled, but we can clearly see he's going to be a player. He started piecing together. We saw the improvement. He capped it off. Really good thing to see. We've seen that happen. Guys get continued small. Better, 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 better than, boom, a big, like, cap-off game. We've seen that. Sadiq Bey, quite literally, was playing horrific basketball. Like, he was awful for, like, the first 26 games of the season. There was no other way around it. Now that that little stretch is over, you can call it how you see it. It was awful basketball. He was horrific. But the last 38 or so games, he's been nothing but, nothing short of excellent. Like, I don't know how, I've never seen something like this where a guy just flips it like that and just continues this kind of excellent play for the rest of the season. It's crazy. I've, I've seriously never seen it before. He shot this game 7 of 14 from the field, 2 of 5 from deep, 3 of 3 from the free throw line. Just, it, it was, this is just a continued excellence from Sadiq that is incredible to watch. And I, I don't know what else to say about it, man. It's just, I've never seen it before. And in this game, it's not just like, it's not just the fact that he's playing better, obviously. But it's like he's making key moments, key plays at key moments, clutch plays, and not just scoring plays. He had a few offensive putbacks. He had one on a Killian Hayes missed corner three. He went down there and just out-muscled everybody. Like the dude's strong as hell. He went down there with the big, with the big, with the trees, grabs the offensive rebound, puts it back. I think he that one tied the game. He had another offensive rebound that continued the possession. The Pistons ended up scoring. He had a few key buckets down the stretch as well. Uh, there was one play in particular as well in the second half where – he gets a steal. He's going full court, court to court, or, or, or uh, end to end. And when he was taking it, he was driving into two people. And in lifetime, I thought to myself, this dude, he's about to take a bad shot. This really is going to hurt the Pistons. This is going to be a momentum swing. And I, it looked like he was going to go up with it, but makes the right decision. And instead of do, going up with it and forcing a bad shot, he dumps it off to Isaiah Stewart, which was in traffic, but it was a really nice pass, per, precise pass. And Isaiah Stewart ended up getting free throws out of it. Like, those are just plays that he wasn't making at the beginning of the season. Little minor plays like that. There's a few plays as well in the half-court offense that I'm sure a lot of people don't really care about, but just I like seeing and it shows improvement. Just quick touch pass swings. Like, instead of, like, earlier in the season when he was holding that ball and trying to do iso moves, he's moving the ball quick. If someone's open, he's able to make that read fast. If someone uh, – if he's reading the closeout, the guy's closing out too fast, he's making that read quick. Early in the season, he was struggling to make those reads quickly. Now he's doing it like that, like that, like that. And – it. I'm going to continue to sing Sadiq Bey's praises because, again, like I said, I've never seen this happen before in the mid of the season and it just be a sustained excellence the rest of the way. Like no dips, no backup dips, like inconsistency. It's been just consistent excellence for 38 straight games after being consistently trash for 26 games. Like I've never seen that kind of flip before in a season. And I got to give Sadiq Bey some praise, especially with some of the late key contributions he made in this game with offensive rebounds. Nice plays, nice passes, smart plays, etc. Just got to give Sadiq Bay some praise there, man. It's just great to see from him. Jeremy Grant, he had a really nice game as well. He played 35 minutes, was a plus six in these minutes. Him and Sadiq looked a little bit better on the floor together here. Uh, again, I, I still think Jeremy Grant's going to get traded, uh, but it's very clear that they're trying to make this whole him and Sadiq and Kay thing work. Uh, and he definitely it looked a lot better here. Now, Jeremy hit a few of these. Shots that you probably wouldn't like him to be taking uh, here. And again, 
we've talked about this in the podcast before as well, that when Jeremy hits some of those shots, he's, his stat line's going to look better, obviously. It's just a matter of bad process. We've said this on the podcast many times. Bad process each equaling good uh, results is not a good thing. Because bad process is usually going to get bad results. Just because you get good results every now and then with bad process doesn't make it a good thing. Now, so when he hits those shots, it looks a little bit better. However, I will give him credit because he still got to the free throw line five times. I don't know how he, the refs respect him. They don't respect Cade, but they respect the hell out of Jeremy Grant, apparently. He got he got five free throws. He took a couple shots at the rim. He hit three or five of his threes. Uh, and, and recently... Not so much this game. He didn't. He wasn't as good defensively this game. But recently, over the past few games, especially against Charlotte, was the hardest I've seen Jeremy play defensively all season. Like this season, he had actively taken a step back defensively. Just wasn't putting that same type of effort. Over the last few games, his efforts ticked up a little bit defensively, and he's looked a lot better. So you got to give Jeremy some credit there and for trying – or give, I guess, him and the coaching staff credit for – trying to make this work and, and look a little bit better with Sadiq and Kay. Cause it, this past game, it did look a little bit better. So give credit to that. Um, and Kay Cunningham, man, he looked fantastic as well. Kate, Kate is just, once Kate starts getting like respect from refs, like he's going to be fantastic. He's going to be even better. This dude just doesn't get any respect from the refs. He could get hit by a double barrel shotgun on the way to the rim. And he's not going to get any foul calls. If I'm Cade, like, I know Dwayne Casey has this whole thing where, you know, don't argue with the refs. Don't pick up a T. I'll pick up the T for you. I'll argue for you. Screw that. Throw all that out the window. If I'm K, I'm picking up T's. I'm arguing. I'm, I'm getting refs' face. Like, I, you have to s- send a message at a certain point. Because Cade's not getting respect. He gets hit on almost every drive he goes. He's only getting, like, two free throws a game. That's that's unacceptable. It's just unacceptable. It's not that Cade's not getting contact. It's not that Cade is not initiating contact. No, he is. He's not getting foul calls. Um, just real quick, as I'm like recording this, I have like the, I'm on like the NBA.com. I see the scores at the top of the screen as I'm like looking at the box score, or whatever. I think Milwaukee just hit a game winner against Miami. They were just down by like 16 points four minutes ago. I know that's like not Pistons related to kind of side topic, but that I, I'm, everyone needs to tell me in the comment section, what the hell just happened? Cause I just saw them down by 16. That's crazy. Uh, but anyways, yeah. K Cunningham. Great. Great game, 29-5. and five. Uh, He avoided foul trouble this game, which was great. Greg Kelser pointed it out late in the game. He was ni- When he picked up his third f- foul, Greg Kelser was like, you know, it's nice to see that, you know, he picks up that third foul and it's not in the first quarter. You had to worry about him not playing as aggressive or whatever. He didn't have to worry about that this game. So it was nice to see that from Cade. Just overall, this, again, this was a fun game. It was an overall good game for majority of their players, a lot of their key players. It was really fun to watch. Again, if you guys didn't watch it, I would go back to Bally Sports and like rewatch this game because it was just a really, really enjoyable game from both sides. And before we go to Adbury, I just got to give this guy a shout out too. He's not for the Pistons. He plays for the Wizards. But Kyle Kuzma has legitimately turned himself into like a really good player. Like he was overrated with the Lakers. I didn't think he was that good of a player with the Lakers. Uh, he wasn't really. And he was overrated because he played for LA, I feel, felt like. But he's went to Washington and he's actually turned himself into a damn good player. Like, he's actually pretty damn good. So, give credit to him, man. He finished with 21, 9, and 6. He actually was hurting the Pistons really bad. Uh, and it was just off a of really, really nice play. So, I, I'm going to give credit for Kyle Kuzma because I did not see that coming. And this is not like the second time we've watched him play against the Pistons. And he's having a really good season, but just against the Pistons, when, when I watch him, it's just you can see that he's actually a much better player now. Uh, and you got to give credit to that, man. I, I, I respect that. But when we come back, we'll talk about – Dwayne Casey showing a little bit more trust in one of their young guys, a guy that, you know, has been controversial in the pup and in the fan base. We'll talk about why it seems like he may be showing more trust in him and what we've seen recently that exhibits that. But first I have to tell you guys about one of our sponsors Let me tell you guys a little bit about rock auto with the ever increasing numbers of makes and models. It's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stack all the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless and seemingly intimidating questioning like, is your Odyssey an LX? And wait, while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home or even in your pocket on your phone. You can save so much time and money when you're using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump 
It's $353 from a chain store, but only $216 from Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business of serving, serving do it yourself for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably lower for every customer, and they have everything you could possibly need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even a new carpet. Go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. So, again, go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box because they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you have not already, head to our YouTube channel, Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to 2,000 subscribers, and we're going to continue to show Lockdown that we are the fastest and best-growing fan base at the Lockdown Network. So again, Lockdown Pistons on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Best way to support the podcast. But Dwayne Casey seems to be showing more confidence and trust in Killian Hayes. Over the last two games, Killian Hayes played the entire fourth quarter of the last game against the Washington Wizards. And the game before against the Charlotte Hornets, he played the entire fourth quarter and overtime. And Killian Hayes has looked better over the last few games. But also, I think that has to do as well, obviously Killian Hayes had to get better himself. He had to start playing better. He had to start playing more aggressive, etc. However, I, I think Dwayne Casey is showing more, show, showing more confidence in him, giving more trust to him. Kind of like gives you, you know, if you've played basketball before, if you played for any team, this isn't just NBA. This goes if you play basketball anywhere, heck, even pickup. You go play college, high school, pickup. When when you're playing with, let's say, a coach, if you're playing for like organized basketball in high school or college, or if you're playing pickup and you're playing with teammates who have trust in you and, and give you confidence, you go out there and you start doing some things that maybe you want to do another night. Or you go out there and start playing with a, a little bit more confidence and start playing a little bit better or start trying things that you normally – normally wouldn't try start taking shots that you normally wouldn't take because you have a little bit more confidence in yourself because of what people around you are putting into you you're giving a little bit more of a leash and you feel like if i mess up i'm still going to have the trust of my coaches or teammates or whatever you're, you're doing it's just basketball basically basketball it isn't just an nba thing it goes all the way down wherever you play basketball and i feel like that's some of the things that's happening here Dwayne casey's showing more confidence in killing hayes we've seen back-to-back games now where killing hayes doesn't move and you're like well, where's that been all season? It was against Charlie. He had that behind the back and one finish over. Uh, I forget who it was at the rim. Uh, I think it was PJ Washington he finished over. Uh, but either way, that was a fantastic move. I don't know. I didn't know he could do that. And then against Washington, he had that hezzy pull-up uh, floater that he did to get by his defender. That was really nice as well. He's just looked a lot better. And in these past two games, against Charlotte, he would six points, seven rebounds, seven assists, and one one steal. This past game against Washington, he had 7.7 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, and a block against Washington. And this is off the bench. Now, obviously, he needs to improve his scoring still. He needs to get better offensively at you know creating his own shot and scoring. But you see all the other things. Like, coming off the bench, if you tell me your backup point guard is averaging 7.7 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, and a block, like, that's one. that's a heck of a backup. And this is a dude who hasn't even – has he hit 82 games yet? He's at 76 games played. So this is technically like by the end of this year, he will have played a rookie season. So through a rookie season, you see a guy who's a really good defender, passes the ball really well, smart player, versatile defensively, but just needs to improve at shooting the ball and scoring the ball. If he improves in those areas, the Pistons are going to have a hell of a player. And I, he, th- he really needs to close this season out with the kind of aggressiveness that aggressiveness that he's showing lately. Like, again, he could shoot, what, what like three of eight, three of nine. He could, he could shoot like 35%, 38%. But if he's going to continue to show the aggressiveness and the ability, or the ability to get to the rim and the insistence to get to the rim, if he continues to show that to close the season, that's a huge step and should give a lot of people confidence that he's going to improve in the offseason. You can improve once you get to the rim. If you can't get to the rim, if you can't create a shot for yourself, if you can't, you know, you know, get all the way into the paint, that's harder to fix than actually what to do when you get there. If he can show and continue to show the aggressiveness and ability to get to these spots, then it should give you more confidence. Now you can work on what to do when you get there. And again, it will be at the end of the year. It will basically be his rookie season that he had played. And going to the next next year, people should be people should be excited. At least I'll be excited for what happens. Uh, he should. I really do think that shooting wise as well, his thumb has messed him up. 
Again, we've talked about it. before he had that thumb injury, he was shooting like 40% from deep. And ever since he went out with that left thumb injury on his on his shooting hand, he's shooting horrifically from deep. Uh, but either way, Dwayne Casey's showing more more trust in him over the last few games. Killian has deserved it. Killian's out there playing really well. He's giving the team what they need defensively. He's playing well offensively in his role. We I just broke down a, uh, a film breakdown on Twitter. I posted on there. If you guys want to go check it out, I'll link it down below. Uh, but linking, I, I I went over a play that you know Dwayne Casey drew up that took advantage of Killian Hayes and put him in the best spot to create a play for someone else. Have him going left with like three different reads going on. It was a really nice play design from Dwayne Casey. So I, not only is he drawing stuff up to take advantage of Killian, I feel like over the last few games, he's also just trusting him a lot more and giving confidence. And when you do that, you'll start to see things from a player that you didn't see before. It's just how basketball works. And it's not just basketball. It's literally anything in life. Like if you, anything that you do competitively in life, if you have more trust from your peers, if you have more trust from your coworkers, trust from your boss, you feel more confident to go out there and do what you're supposed to do. It's, like that shouldn't be a crazy thing to think. So I really like what we've seen from Killian over the last few games. Obviously, again, he needs to improve his scoring. But I feel like he's showing us multiple steps that he's taken in the right direction since coming off the bench. Uh, over the last, let's see. This is where, yeah, January 23rd. Oh, ever since coming off the bench, he's averaging 5.9 points a game, 5.2 assists a game, 3.1 rebounds, a steal a game, and shooting 40% from the field. Not great stuff, but just. He's averaging more assists. He's getting guys more involved. The team is looking pretty good when he's on the floor. He's getting active defensively, actively like a plus defender on that end. And you can just see minor improvements in his game. Hopefully we continue to see those minor improvements as the season ends. Uh, and Dwayne Casey continues to show this kind of confidence in him to close games. Uh, and yeah, I, I will just see where the chips, the chips will fall where they may. So really like this past game against Washington. Again, we talked about Sadiq. Talk about Jeremy. Excuse me. We talked about, you know, the stretch that really led to the Pistons downfall. And we talked about Killing Hayes having another good game. So can't wait to watch the next game from the Pistons. I believe they played today. Um, by the time you guys listen to this, it will be on Thursday. I don't know who they play against, though. Uh, I, I honestly could just check right here. Yeah. They, oh, they play against Toronto. So this is a W. They're going to get a W here. It's pretty easy. Anytime the Pistons play against the Toronto Raptors with Dwayne Casey to coach, they just win. So we might as well just chuck that up to the win. Uh, and then they have another back to back against Indiana the following night. So we'll be right here at Lockdown Pistons to cover all of that. Thank you guys for listening today, making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button over at Lockdown Pistons, best way to support the podcast. I'd really appreciate it. Make sure you guys make Lockdown NBA your second listen of every day. Lockdown experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Again, I want to thank you guys for the for listening or watching if you're watching this on YouTube to Lockdown Pistons podcast. I really appreciate all the support you guys have shown. And the Pistons actually have been pretty good over the last 20 games. They have a better record than the Lakers, and the Lakers are supposed to be the super team. Lakers are just awful, by the way, guys. I wouldn't advise any of you guys to watch their games when they go on national TV. They need to stop putting them on national TV. I keep turning these games on late after I get done recording. I'm like, okay, what game we got on? The Lakers are on. I'm like, bro, I don't want to watch these trash bags. Like LeBron straight up quit the other night. It was just like, uh, I need to take the Lakers off the uh, off national TV, man. Uh, but yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast today. I'll see you guys later. Catch you all on tomorrow's podcast. Go Pistons. Stay safe, everybody.